everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. Ah, no, some brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. All right, maggots, I want you to listen up and give me 50 reviews in five seconds. <laughs> whoa, 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 dude, that's, that's too fast. Nobody can be Yahtzee, okay? <laughs> Only Yahtzee can do that. Only oh, Yahtzee. Well, <laughs> I don't see any of you with a Yahtzee. <laughs> I never managed to get a Yahtzee. But, uh, so, as you guys know, by, I can tell by the title. <laughs> oh, it's a dr- drill sergeant. I, I, I never had one of those. But, as you guys can see from the title, we are going to be reviewing issue number 11 of the Friends Forever comic series, uh, starring Rainbow Dash and Spitfire, uh, written by Ted Anderson, with art by Jay Foskett, and colors by Heather Breckel. Like always, I vote for uh, for first impressions going inverted alphabetical order. But this one is going to be a doozy of a review, and I feel like I am going to be jumping back and forth. But so, guys, what did you what do you think of this uh, one comic in particular? Well, it, it, for me, it's kind of funny. It's a, it's such a different take on Spitfire, who is probably one of the more maligned characters these days. Uh, it's so weird that Spitfire is the Wonderbolt. She's the face of the whole team. She's the one with the most dialogue. She's the one with the most appearances. And she's also the one who, when she does something wrong, it reflects badly on the whole team. Kind of like in a real-life captain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So lately, in pretty much all her appearances, she's been less than ideal. She was not, in my opinion, a very good drill instructor. Uh, not, and even worse, in Rainbow Falls. So here's one that shows her a little, not only more sympathetic, but also more skilled. You know, suddenly she's not uh, waiting on Rainbow Dash to save the day, so to speak. Though she is asking for help. But the other thing is that this uh, this kind of highlights a problem with Rainbow Dash and the Wonderbolts throughout the franchise. Which I'll I'll get into later, but... I just I read this and thought, you know, why does Rainbow want to be a Wonderbolt? So that's the that's one of the key chief questions this comic leaves me wondering. When I read this, I I I don't know why, but I have a soft spot for kids. Like I I don't like watching or seeing kids cry or all that kind of stuff. And looking at this comic, it go it makes my heart go ah and stuff. And looking at how Spitfire here is having a hard time teaching, I am in the same boat. I, I got no idea how to teach. And looking at her trying her best to find a way that's perfect for her is funny yet uncomfortable and sad. Like, a whole lot of emotion for this one. And, oof. I got no idea what to say some more because this is a bit heavy for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, and I can probably share the exact same point of view on this one. Um, I used to be a teacher uh, during the year two thousand four to two thousand five in Madrid before I moved and uh, before I moved to Granada, and I can very much identify myself with not just a Spitfire but every single character involved in this comic. I'm going to say it right now. This one is my absolute favorite of the Friends Forever comics. Like, number one. This one tramples every single one, and there hasn't been a comic that could uh, uh, put itself in the same position as this one. Perhaps the the upcoming Rarity and Babs uh, issue gets a very, very close second. But this is my absolute favorite. But let's not delay any further, and let's talk about it. Yep, yep. So, um... We start in Ponyville with Rainbow Dash being the substitute male pony because maybe Derpy derped so hard that she ended up crashing or something. And the way that Rainbow Dash delivers the mail is not much better. Like, it, it fails in every single way. <laughs> oh, it goes in. Menace to society. <laughs> Reminds me of the video game Paperboy if this was with ponies and mail. <laughs> it goes everywhere but, it, but what it's supposed to. And... Finds out that one of the letters is uh, addressed to her. 
and it's addressed to her from Spitfire, asking her to go for a secret mission of the utmost importance. Thus, she leaves male duties to Scootaloo. <laughs> and to take care of Tank as well. <laughs> Taking care of the male is one thing. I'm sure Scootaloo can get that done quick, quick. But uh, how is she going to get up to Rainbow's home <laughs> to see Tank? I don't know. <laughs> Stairs. Uh, Maybe she has an elevator cloud or something. One one thing that I like Scootaloo's line here is, how do you know so much about delivering mail? You've only been a substitute mail pony for an hour. <laughs> Uh, the rainbow. Oh. The look here is awesome. Like, even with just two panels of her, we can see her. Like, oh, Rainbow Dash, you're so. Oh, you used to be my idol. <laughs> oh, but here, here's a question we haven't really talked about: the art style. Ah, yes. Oh, that's, yes. That's a, that drew a lot of flack early on. Ah. Uh. You know what? You know what? I I was at, in the same boat when I first saw the art style. But you know what? Uh, Jay Fos Fosgit was it? Yeah, Jay Fosgit. Jay Fosgit's style here is grew on me because it's different, but it's not a bad kind of different. It's almost in the same boat with Agnes Garboska's kind of different. Yeah, I can't say I real. At first, I was like, "Wow, them some big heads," but then I thought, "Yeah, you know we." I enjoy multiple art styles within the fandom. Mm -hmm. Some draw the ponies more realistic. Some draw them even more cartoony. And I was like, you know, it's just a different style. Getting upset at it for not looking like the show doesn't really, doesn't really jive with me. Mm -hmm. And here's the best part. Like, you know who's drawing it because we all know Andy Price. We all know uh, Agnes, we all know Jay. And then, who am I leaving out? James, there's a few more, right? Um, Agnes Garbowska, Tony Flicks. Yeah, Tony, and so yeah. on. Uh, Tom Saylor did also the artwork for just one comic, and that was the Twilight Sparkle Micro. Mm -hmm. And, yes. well, there, there's uh, multiple... And the price, of course. Let's mm -hmm. not forget about that one. But, yeah, this is, this was the first, uh, outing of, uh, Jay Fosgate into the MLP comics. And I am on the same boat that you guys are. I'm just keeping it silent because I like to hear you guys talk, yeah. but, but I absolutely, um, I absolutely agree 100%. The art style is very distracting, but only for the first two or three pages for me. Like, mm -hmm. after that, I got used to it. It was very, it was very weird because when you open the comic first and you see that preview page with, uh, the names of the people that work on it, the way that Speedfire and Rainbow Dash are drawn, they look like little fillies. They don't look like grown-up mares. Yeah, yeah. But they are little ponies, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, time for the secret mission. The secret mission. And with Squirrel left with so much patience he has. But yeah, Rainbow Dash uh, arrives to uh, Cloudsdale and Speedfire is like, Great, you're going to have to help me on our most, your most difficult mission yet. And her greatest challenge, she opens the door and children. <laughs> Absolutely 100% true. <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, but as they see the little fillies and calls, it is obvious to be, um, it's, it's a junior flyers, uh, summer camp. And Rainbow Dash is confident. She's, she knows that she can tackle this, but Spitfire is terrified. <laughs> and, <laughs> Can we take a minute to to realize how we have never seen Spitfire look this scared anywhere? She has never looked this 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 terrified of anything or anyone, and it's it's, it's I I don't know the way that she's looking at the children. She's like, oh my god, please don't hurt me. I just love Rainbow Dash's face here. That smug look. I thought you said this was going to be tough, Spitfire. Teaching a bunch of kids is gonna be a snap. Oh, well, Spitfire will snap. Oh god. Oh, she snapped already. She starts snap. Oh. Uh, and it is it is that fear, that very palpable fear that you have when you're teaching class for the first time. And you don't know how to, um, how to talk to children because mm -hmm. you, you, you don't, when you're an adult, you don't remember those times when you were, a, you, when you were a kid. You try your best to do that, but you can't. Mm -hmm. It's, it's impossible. You, you've lived too long to forget about it. Mm -hmm. So it, it is great that she starts teaching them what a wing is and Rainbow does right away, right away goes and says, I'm pretty sure they know what a wing is, chief. <laughs> so, and it comes, that comes from the, from the fear of, um, 
uh, been, uh, you, well, we're going to talk about this later, but it is good to see that Rainbow Dash is so confident about everything and how she's teaching the the, the little fillers and colts and how Speedfire is just standing there petrified trying not to make eye contact with the little kids. <laughs> oh, that fear, that fear. And we get introduced to our token uh, little filly of the of the group, uh, Loop de Loop. I love her. So it's so cute. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Can I get a copy of that audio file? <laughs> sure. I, I I got it recorded. Oh, you uh, will. I, I'm going to just play that anytime a cute uh, pony appears on the show. <gasps> oh my god! That will be brilliant. <laughs> oh, I will. I will turn you into an internet meme. Oh <laughs> god. Oh, I'm not sure now. <laughs> and that's it, why, no, and that's why no one should ever have me on the on their podcasts. Or why should everyone got you on their podcast? <laughs> blackmail, blackmail is everywhere. But yeah, loop de loop, or as Rainbow Dash call her, calls her, uh, Loopy. She <laughs> needs uh, she needs help with her exercises, and <laughs> Speedfire is not getting any better. <laughs> she, she, I love her jump. She's like. Amy Speedfire. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, wow, Pegasus. Like, this is something interesting. Like, we get a look inside of how training is. Well, well at least junior training is. Uh, and uh, the the question that the children ask are actually very um. They're really, they're very children children like all the way to the to the. Hey, do you have a special song pony? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is very impertinent. That is very much like what children will do. Mm. And uh, Rainbow Dash seeing this, she's like, oh, jeez, uh, Spitfire needs help. Hold on there, Loopy. I gotta go help my, uh, gotta go help, go help one of my heroes. Mm, yeah. So at the end of the day, they, they end up uh, exhausted. It's like, wow, taking care of all those fillers and calls, it takes forever. But hey, they, uh, they sure do have potential. And Spitfire finally collapses. So like, you wanna, why and talk about it? And Spitfire is like, yeah. <laughs> That's, I don't know what, I don't know what you guys think about it, but it, that is so natural. That is such a, such a natural reaction. It's like, oh God, yes, please, let's talk about this. Something isn't and, working here. And for Pegasi, that seems like the, it's kind of like going out for a beer or, uh, or Go just going, for going for a walk. Just some sort of shared parallel play that, sets the mood, which I think is is brilliant and fits the Pegasi perfectly. I'm sure for unicorns to be, hey, do you want to go violate the rules of nature? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Hey, do you wanna do you wanna make uh do you wanna splice flowers between each other? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, and another thing I noticed that the very uh, normal nature of the entire comic is that this is probably 100% pure slice of life, a uh, slice of life, uh, uh, story. It doesn't have like big adventures or going to other lands. This is a very little, very tiny, uh, tiny story. But the thing is that what makes of it, is, what makes this of is the, the character interactions. And I know that that's one of the big issues when it comes to the Friends Forever comics is that Many of the comics don't make the best out of the interaction between the characters. <laughs> Respect, Micro. <laughs> uh, but the the thing is, uh, this one does, in my own humble opinion. I love the conversations that Spitfire and Rainbow Dash have while they are uh, flying. This wouldn't be the last one they have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's also hilarious how uh, Rainbow gives no quarter in her honest opinion. I'm terrible with kids. Yeah, you are. You are. Yeah. <laughs> well, you I mean, know, is that? I mean, I, I guess I kind of would have found it funny if she tried to say, "No, oh, you were great. You were uh, okay. Yeah, you're you're not that great." But I, I, well, you know, from the from the people that are from what I got from uh, from the people in the military, um, when you are discussing something of this nature or any other nature, you better be honest, because I mean, okay, summer camp is not as important as drill uh, drill camp or uh, or uh, you know basic service, but you need to know, you need to let your, your superior know when there is a problem. And you are, like, you know, you have to agree with them. <laughs> so, <laughs> technically, Rainbow Dash is superior in Spitfire. If she starts lying to her and comforting her, that is not solving the problem. And it is clear that they have a problem here. And I love, I love that they present Spitfire to, in, in such a way that, 
yeah, I can I can shout and be tough with you guys because I know you can take it, but I don't know if I can be like the children. And that is such a legit fear. Like when um every time there is a new teacher, uh every time you start teaching and you have all the all the little kids looking at you, you are not scared of what the children may think of you because they they are children. But in that or they you know, you're not scared of uh, them making fun of you. You're scared of being too hard with them and upsetting them. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing that you want is a crying children. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the last one, the last thing that you want is the children to fear you. Uh, well, if, if you are me, the last thing that you want is the children to fear you. They need to see you as a supportive figure because you are like the, you, you are going to be part of that education. You have to be very careful with that. And I love the way that they presented it here. I think that is a very, um, down to earth take on the teacher role. Yep, yep. And, with one advice from Rainbow Dash, get tough. <laughs> I don't know what to think. <laughs> that is not a good advice, Rainbow. <laughs> well, uh, no, no one ever said Rainbow offered good advice. True. Never, never tell a person who is insecure about something to get tough with it, because then you get putting your hoof down. Oh God. Then you get the person going way too far, because they have no measure. So that's what happens to Speedfire, actually. And I like mm-hmm. how they put it there, is that she goes from being to, uh, uh, mm, to being, okay, then, hot, get your flanks in the line, pronto! This, oh, God, this is not good. Yep. Oh, God. But that only has one effect. <laughs> the effect is... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> poor Loopy and the rest of the kids, like, oh, God, this is not a... Uh, I, I don't know how how to react to this because do you guys know one of those um summer camp movies or TV shows like the there's a overly strict drill sergeant kind of character always yeah and this reminds me of that kind of situation where he he revels in it he he enjoys the crying kid like that's what he lives for but this one you can see like oh god, everybody here is not having a good time, and Spitfire here too is like, no, and Rainbow Dash is like, everybody is not having fun at all. I think uh, I would be ashamed. Yeah. I and, would be very ashamed. Yeah. And I don't know, okay, here's, um, Silver, you tell me, like, I don't know if you experience a lot of summer camps or not, but what is the point of summer camp? To get you out of the damn house for a week so your parents can enjoy a little time to themselves. Okay, that's one. Yes. But what's the other one? Hell, I did do summer camp and I hated it. But then again, I, I'm i an introvert. Mm. That was, that's like the most toxic experience, I think, for an introvert. Forced commune with people you don't know and ultimately, in my case, didn't end up liking terribly much. It's also supposed to impart, maybe you discover if you have a love of the outdoors or physical education. But be, by and large, I just don't, I didn't see the point. Mm, okay. I didn't now, see the point either. Like, I, I don't like to be socializing with other children. I went to summer camp once. Once was once. enough. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, this, this, like, the one that the kids in this comic are going to is very specific to a flight camp. So I, I don't know what kind of camp you went to, so I, I can't say much. But in my humble opinion, if you went to something that you're really interested in, that would be awesome. But we weren't. So yeah, so I can't sucks. say much. Yeah. That sucked so, so much. It, it sucks. So from this, uh, from this comic, maybe the recreation of the summer camp feel is uh, not like so, but that's because, uh, you have, you have two instructors, you have two supervisors who are, two teachers who are not unlike any other teacher that you might see in movies like, let's say, the National Lampoon movies or the, uh, the Porky's movies, like, you know, those, the, the, the ones that have the over the top instructors that are either complete, uh, jerks or complete pushovers. This one has a good balance because Rainbow Dash is very confident about herself and uh, she carries her, uh, she, she carries herself with a lot of um you bravado? know she uh, yes exactly a lot of bravado and she knows how to tre- uh, how to um deal with children because she treats them like equals but Spitfire doesn't have any idea she's more used to deal with adults than she's used to deal with children 
And of course, trying to treat the children like adults results in the <laughs> the poor the poor foals getting so upset. Oh, and man. I'm like, how can something be so funny and at the same time so sad? I know. I don't know. I mean, to me, this this moment is tough for me. Like I said earlier on, I, I don't like seeing kids tear up and cry. And this is this is tough for me, even if it's produced like. Uh, it's fictional, but you see yourself in this situation. Yeah. This is probably also thanks to the art style is that this is, this is actually the part of the comic where the art style is actually, actually gets really well because it does get the point through that these ponies are upset and they are sad. And this is very hard to watch, but at the same time, it's hilarious. I mean, look at those trails of tears. Yep, yep. That is, that is some Looney Tunes stuff right there. I mean, that, that, I love that. Mm-hmm. And, it is it is really fun, legit funny and legit uh, sad at the same time. And that ending is like too tough, way too tough. <laughs> so they go for another uh, Fly. uh, fly by, flying mm-hmm. by where they finally figure out that there has to be a middle point. They cannot keep going like this. So the next day they try out something different. Mm-hmm. So Rainbow Dash is stage... I'm yeah, sorry, can ahead. I just jump in real quick before we move beyond the scene? How often does Rainbow admit that she's given bad advice? Uh, not we- not that often. So here's Rainbow saying, don't beat yourself up. I gave you some bad advice. <laughs> and Spitfire, to her credit, is owning it, saying, I took that advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is so, something. Not every character is so aware of their mistake. True. But you know, what Rainbow said was get tough. But from my point of view, when I heard it, like, get tough as in Spitfire should toughen up and, like, take the moment and assess it, not scream and shout. Just that get tough and being terrifying are not one and the same thing. <laughs> but like Spitfire said, she doesn't have a well balance. Like I said, it's tough for both parties because Spitfire is really trying hard to become the best teacher Yet, she doesn't know how to because she's scared of kids. But also, we get a little bit of characterization for Spitfire in that she didn't want to be captain of the Wonderbolts originally. Hmm. She wanted just to fly, not unlike Rainbow Dash. So here's just a little bit of characterization for a character who hasn't really enjoyed a lot of positive presentation lately. She's make She's making mistakes, but she's also feeling bad about it. So I thought that was a very well done scene as well. And it, it only gets better because then the next day they arrive at the, um, at the class and it is brilliant how all the little cults are like on one side of the class. <laughs> like they don't even want to approach Speedfire. But it is, it is loop de loop, the one that uh, gets, uh, to her and she's like, we don't know what is Rainbow Dash. Uh, it, uh, are we going to have class today? I mean, I need help with my exercises and, Rainbow does erupt, interrupts and is like, Tornado! <laughs> and lets the Spitfire take care of it. And that's the moment where she, um, she gives a kind of like, uh, theoretical, practical class to the, to the little children and shows them how Spitfire is able to, uh, take care of the tornado with the different techniques, which it serves both purposes. It serves the, uh, the purpose of, oh, look at that, Spitfire is super cool doing something, and she's actually a very radical teacher. But at the same time, it teaches them the different techniques and the different ways to deal with, um, with a risky situation, which helps paint a Spitfire in a more positive light for the little kids, which is exactly what Spitfire needed after the, the mess up of yesterday. Yep. After that mess, you know, just... Uh... Although, can we also say that uh, Spitfire's gratitude, yay, Rainbow Dash endangered lives. <laughs> so true. I like to think that she organized a tornado in a, in a uh, non-populated area, and it wasn't all that big. Because if you remember, um, I don't think anyone dealt with the tornado of Wonderbolts Academy. Oh. I think it was just left wild. But <laughs> if Spitfire is, uh, is capable of just... Getting rid of the tornado on her own, it could have been one of the like weakest uh, tornadoes out there. Like F1. I don't expect it. Yeah, I don't. Well, not even that. I don't expect the tornado to be all that powerful. Yeah. But but here's the point. Also, James, you have to remember, it's a tornado heading to a building full of children. Well, so, consider it's so, a building made out of bricks. Do you know how hard has a tornado have to grind against the building to make any damage to it? 
It, it looks like it's solid. Yeah. Oh, uh, but so, honey, how was your day at flight camp? We nearly died from a tornado. <laughs> Yay. That's nice. Uh, no. I feared for my life. Uh, uh. I could ruin anything. Yep. <laughs> no, not really, but I, 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 I do, I, well, hmm. I just, Not that I, just, I find it hilarious that, you know, we're, we're praising Rainbow, but, uh, there might be some ethical issues, I'm just saying. <laughs> so true. It doesn't, it doesn't detract from the, um, from the overall experience though. I mean, there is a lot of, there is a lot of trust going on in there. I'm pretty sure that Rainbow trusted Speedfire to get rid of the tornado, but can you imagine the alter, the alternate scenario? Speedfire oh. tries to get rid of the tornado. <laughs> I can't hold it! It's breaking up! And then it, she gets thrown against the building, and Dash is like, oh crap. And then the tornado takes down the building. I don't know. Now, News 11, a tornado just crossed through clouds, they'll kill in hundreds of ponies, putting an entire school in risk. <laughs> and that's, and that's when you learn there's no reason to join the Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Official Sun investigators are looking for Rainbow Dash, supposed better of the element of loyalty. We don't know yet. We're going to have to contact with Princess Twilight Sparkle on the matter. <laughs> Long time friend of Rainbow <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ruin. Uh, yeah, ruin forever. Uh, <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> Uh, no, okay. <laughs> How to continue from that? Uh, but, no as, they, as, uh, Speedfire finally gets uh, a bit of confidence back, and she realizes that dealing with children is not all that, uh, scary when, um, when you know how to, uh, how to talk with them and how to, uh, how to treat them. And I like, I like this conclusion that, uh, the, the, cl- the summer can be sober, or at least the classes are, are over for the day. Uh, Loop de Loop seems to be incredibly motivated, and uh, they 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 leave it there. And then Rainbow Dash comes back home uh, to meet up with Scootaloo, who is uh, angry and uh, and worried because Rainbow Dash didn't write or didn't do anything. And I like this last quote that the comic ends with: "With uh, even your heroes can have flaws, you know." <laughs> Uh, Which yes. is absolutely true, and something that people so often forget about that. The people that we admire, of course, they are, we admire them, they are great, but come on, nobody's perfect. True, 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 true. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the end of the, and that's the end of the comic. And, I, okay, guys, what would be your final thoughts on, on this one? Before we go to final thoughts, there is oh. one thing that's not really related to the comic, but this comic does highlight. Spitfire has now received two lectures from Rainbow Dash on ethics. <laughs> and now she's received Rainbow Dash's help dealing with kids, less extreme, but it sort of raises a question that's been great, that's been building in my mind over four seasons. Why does Rainbow want to be part of the Wonderbolts? Because it seems like the teaching is all going one way. She is teaching them. And I just feel like sometimes the Wonderbolts seem actually to be a detraction for her. And no, this is not meant to say, oh, Spitfire is so awful. Oh, this comic makes no sense because a rookie shouldn't be teaching the captain. That's not a problem. But we receive, we're seeing this situation repeat enough over the franchise that I'm starting to question, can the Wonderbolts teach Rainbow something important right now? Well, Silver, with Rainbow joining the Wonderbolts is a lifelong dream. And if she joins, it will be something like accomplishing a goal. But have you ever thought about it's not what they could teach Rainbow, but what she could teach them? Uh, see, I don't, she could teach them a lot. But then the point, the question is, well, has this dream just been a fiction the whole time? I'd like to see mutual learning. The way I'm looking at it is, is the Wonderbolt would be teaching Rainbow Dash skills and discipline, and she could teach them about loyalty. Who knows? But it's a question that I, I'd love to see an episode where the Wonderbolts get Rainbow Dash. Actually, there is one time where a Wonderbolt has actually given Dash a lecture. Oh. And 
And surprisingly enough, it was Spitfire. It the first annual Quest for Your Girls comic that featured mm-hmm. on the Human Five. So technically she was a Wonder Colt, not a Wonder Bolt. <laughs> but that was the one time she taught Rainbow about teamwork. And they're like, okay, can we get that in pony form? Uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Apparently not. Well, who knows? No, uh, uh, not yet, but there is always the potential of that being treated. Um, either in the, uh, either in the comics or in the TV show, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I mean, Many stories and many um, many themes have been treated throughout the uh, throughout these five years of Pony. Uh, I'm pretty sure sooner or later we're gonna have the whole teamwork is better than just doing things on your own when you have the option, uh, rather than just ignoring the team and being by yourself. I guess it's a matter of uh, perspective more than anything else. Then again, if you're going onto a comic or into an episode of, of anything with a preconceived idea. And you put the the preconceived idea before what the comic or or episode or movie is about. You are not exactly talking about the comic that you just read. You are talking about the comic that you want you would have liked to read. So, yeah, but this is part of an arc. This is a theme for me. It's a recurring image. Something noticeable. Yeah, it is true. That part of, of a totality. Yeah, I guess it's it also runs into the same problem of. Um, Testing, testing, one, two, three, or Wonder Worlds Academy, or Rainbow Falls, is that the whole Rainbow Dash wanting to join the, the Wonder Bolts. It's so much of a fuff that at this point, Dash would have been part of the Wonder Bolts for a while. <laughs> because it's like, okay, you have to go to the Academy. Now you're part of the reserves. Now you have to pass a test. Now you have to do an exam. Now you have to do this, this, and that. And I, I am like, there are so many rules and regulations. I suddenly kind of understand why there was so much paperwork in the previous uh, story arcs that we had in the in the main series of the IDW comics, because there is so many ma- so many hoops that you have to jump through in order to get to the point that you want to be. The question uh-huh. is collapsing under its own bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> We're all I, drowned I, in paperwork. I support build up and I support uh, uh, going through the motions because in a very analytical way. But it's getting to the point of, can you just put Rainbow Dash on a, on a Wonderbolt outfit? From what we knew in season one, all we needed was just, all she needed to do was just wow them with her moves at the Grand Galloping Gala and she will be a Wonderbolt. Now you're going to put a lot of, um, you're going to put a lot of hoops for her to jump through. I cannot think of an, or any other analogy. I'm, I, I apologize for that, but the, okay. Are we doing final thoughts now, or are we discussing this one part of the no, of the call? I, I think we're done. Uh, we can go to final thoughts if we want to. May we yes. go to final thoughts? Yeah. Final yeah. Okay. Thoughts. Like like always, uh, in inverted alphabetical order. Well, like, like I say, the uh, the artwork will startle you for the first two pages, but then you get into the flow and you just enjoy it. There are a ton of full designs. I mean, just on the front cover, uh, you see all these little folds which is a lot of fun. You don't see a lot of those in the show, so it's a nice uh, addition. And it's a very relatable uh, story where Spitfire is causing a lot of trouble, and yet she's very sympathetic in doing so. You get the sense she's trying to do good and is so frustrated that it's just not going the way she thought. And there's no shame in that in my eyes. As for me, when I read the comic, when I look at it, it's it's one of those comics where this tale has not been told that much. Obviously, we've seen renditions of it and whatnot, but the way that it's told in this comic, it's really, really good. I felt emotional. Like, I, it's, it made me... Ah, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But it made me feel, feel for uh, Spitfire. It made me feel for the children. It made me feel for Dash. And when we see... Uh, Spitfire Triumph. I I feel happy for her. I mean, everything. This, this comic hits on every point of the emotion that it was trying to say or trying to project. And I say this is a really good comic. I, I can say otherwise. You, That's not a word. You took away all of my words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I completely acknowledge all the problems with the story and um. Perhaps the setting even. And I will go as far as saying that, yeah, I had those problems when I did read the comic first. Uh, but 
they do not break the deal for me. They are not. Uh, they don't ruin the comic for me. They uh, because the, 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 I am a character guy. I've always been a character guy. Uh, the MLP, the show that we love, that we know and love, it is based on cliches and it is based on uh, on, on formulas that uh, take a different spin because of how the characters decide to tackle those those formulas and how they get out of the the different situations. That's what makes them so enjoyable, and that's what makes this comic so good. I mean, you can have a comic with a bunch of characters, like uh, the the Friends Forever with Granny Smith and the Flim Flam Brothers. That one had a bad load of characters. Or the one that we are going to get uh, to get to fairly soon, the the Princess Luna and Spike uh, Friends Forever one. That one has an amazingly it's it's an insulting amount of characters. There are so many, and it doesn't completely flesh out all of them. However, because this comic has, I will say, five characters, like it's Scootaloo, Speedfire, Rainbow Dash, Loop de Loop, and the Instructor uh, Teacher, and I will put the rest of the ponies as a, as a, as another group, it manages to flesh them out a lot more and uh, give them a lot of personality. And that is the best part of the of this comic book. All the characters are unbelievably likable. They are so like I can I can see myself in them like I can see it from Spitfire, from Rainbow Dash's perspective, from Loop de Loop, from from everyone. And I, it's so good. I want these characters to get better. I want them to succeed. I want them to 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 uh, get out of the come out of this situation with a happy ending. And when that happy ending arrives, it's so satisfying. So just think about it for a moment. This comic with flying horses, flying pastel color horses, is more engaging than many other comics or many other stories out there, at least from a personal standpoint. I absolutely adore this comic. This is great. I love it. My favorite of the Friends Forever so far. But who knows? Maybe the Diamond TR and Silver Spoon one is going to blow my mind. Oh, God. <laughs> that is... I, I have a hard time picturing that. <laughs> uh, yep. Same here. <laughs> Let's see what they do. Let's see what they they do with those two censored. <laughs> <laughs> there is no word that it's created to describe those two. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, well, I think we general general thoughts is that very co- very positive. We liked it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was That's enjoyable true. comic. <laughs> yep, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it highly. Awesome. Uh, like I say, it it raises the question of Rainbow Dash's future with the Wonderbolts, but not in a that doesn't detract from the comic itself. It just fits. It's another piece in a larger puzzle. Of course, it's not. Um, it doesn't take one from the other. But well, that is that makes it for uh, for today's episode. Uh, well, comic review. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. So next week we're going to be reviewing uh, an episode of the show, right, Norman? Yep. Yep. Yes, we're going to be reviewing episode four of season five. Uh, that is Bloom and Gloom, written by Josh Haber. Ah, wow. We have a lot of things to say about that episode. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys, that will be for another time. Yes. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much for uh, being there. If you guys weren't listening, we wouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for being there, guys. Uh, I have been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzo. And I am Drill Sergeant Silver Quill, and I want you two magus to give me 50 laps now. Hut, 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 hut. <laughs> I have it. Last time, last time I ran, the U.S. president was white. I don't want to run. Well, now you get 60 laps for being racist. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys get offended by everything. Oh, my God. Okay. That's, that's right. Let <laughs> me get violence now. Drop. Uh, give me 60. Let do it, James. Let do it. Drop and give you 60 watt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bye bye, guys. <laughs> oh no. Bye. Goodbye, maggots.